blessings and abundance to all of you. The share or welcome. Will you share this broadcast this morning? If you will, share it. Invite others to come in. This message is powerful. Didn't need a fancy title. Didn't need any subtitle. Just simply, who said you were naked? Here we go. In the book of Genesis, third chapter, verse 8 through 11. We find the story, you know, in chapter 1, God created the heavens and the earth, created everything as we know it. In chapter 2, he created man and put man in the midst of the garden. But before he did that, in the end of chapter 1 of Genesis, he created man and female and female. He empowered them, told them to go throughout the world and seduce us, us to, uh, not seduce, but to take over the world, to go in, to reproduce, to go within the world and give, just, just to take over and do all the things, subdue and do all the things that God called them to do. And in chapter two, he created man because world, the world was created with no man to till the ground. He created man from the dust of the earth, bred into his nostrils, and man began to live. Hey, Monica. Hey, Lavi. And so in chapter three, or in the end of chapter two, rather, we see where he puts Adam to sleep because he said it's not good for man to be alone. And so he put him to sleep, took from his rib, Adam. And then we have Eve comes from Adam. And so now in chapter three, here's Adam and Eve. But the story takes off with Eve sitting, gazing at the tree. The tree that they were told not to eat of, the tree uh, of life that contained good and evil, They're told not to eat of that tree. And so as we go on and look, and this story is really good, it goes on around verse eight to say this. Well, before that, Eve took of the fruit, gave it to Adam. The, en the enemy spoke to Eve and says, what are you gazing at? I'm gazing at the fruit. Get it. Well, we can't eat it because we were told if we eat it, we would die. The enemy says, will you surely die? Now, what's unique about this story is that it was a natural death that they were thinking. But how would they even know that? Because there was no such thing as death at that time. So with that being said, what does it mean that you will surely die? With a question mark. In other words, are you going to die naturally? Are you going to die spiritually? Or will you die to your abilities to do what God has called you to do? See, that's a loaded question. And so after gazing, Eve looks up and says, I'll, I'll take it. She bit of it. She didn't die naturally. She just gives it to Adam, who's gazing and watching. We know that women are uh, sometimes the, um, the one that's very inquisitive, and she looks at something, and she's intuitive, and she goes, hmm. She takes it, gives it to Adam. Adam eats of it. Next thing we know, both of them are sitting there, but something happened. They became aware of their surroundings. And it says in verse 8, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord, God among the trees of the garden. Good morning, Kelly. Come on, share this message, everybody. But verse nine, but the Lord called to man and he said, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. That's key, guys. You got to get that. It's very key. He said, I heard you in the garden. Now, what that says to me before I go any deeper is God always met Eve, I mean, met Adam in the cool of the evening in the garden. So why is it that this particular time he hears him and he hides because he was afraid? His fear was due to him saying, I was naked, so I hid. And he said, this is what God said, who told you? that you were naked. Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? And I want to pause right there. Who told you that you were naked? We find God here speaking to Adam, coming to meet Adam as he has always met him. But this particular day, Adam is not to be found because fear has gripped him because he has all of a sudden gained some knowledge that he is naked. What I really hear God asking, uh, asking Adam is this, Adam, who said that you are inadequate? Because to be naked deals with the word inadequate, inadequacies. How many of you this morning feel inadequate? So for, some, for that reason, you have fear to do things. You feel that like you're inadequate to do uh, jobs. You don't feel like you're qualified for positions. You're inadequate when it comes to a, a male or female. You don't feel like you're on their level. 
You're inadequate when it comes to being the smart, being around smart people or people of, of, of influentials, the influencing of, of, of who they are. You, you feel inferior to them, like they are above you. And so for that reason, you're inadequate. How many of you can be honest and care? I struggle with that. I struggle with being me because I feel like I'm not good enough. So what God was asking Adam is, who told you that you were inadequate? I made you naked. I made you with no clothes on. I put you in a garden. I gave you everything there is. I gave you the ability to speak this world and create and give names and create things. And I gave you the ability to subdue. I gave you the ability to be. I gave you the ability to recreate. So why all of a sudden, Adam, you are finding yourself to be inadequate? This is some good stuff. So when God was telling me about this, he said he was really asking Adam, who told you you're not good enough? I want to ask you this morning watching, who has convinced you going into another year and almost through this year that you're not good enough? So you don't even step up and do the things that, that you could do because you don't feel like you're able to do it. You see someone you're interested in and rather get being rejected, you just sit back and say, I'm not on their level, so I won't say anything. The word of God clearly lets us know we have not because we ask not. And many people are not asking God for the very thing because here's cases now. If you truly operate in your authenticity, you don't have to ask because you have the ability to create it. This is so powerful. And so inadequate is defined as lacking the quality or the quantity required. Insufficient for a purpose. Many of you watching right now struggle with low self-esteem. You struggle with self-identity because you don't feel that you're good enough because of a failed relationship, a failed situation, not being considered the best candidate for a job. And so for that reason, you've now found yourself not applying for things, not moving forward with things. Because you've allowed the spirit of fear to grip you, just as Adam allowed the, fear of, uh, the spirit of fear to make him hide from God. God is saying so clearly this morning, there is much that I require of thee, but you're hiding from him because you don't feel like you're, in, you're, 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 you're okay to do it. You have inadequacies. You don't feel like you can do it. God, I'm inadequate. You remember when Moses was charged to go and free the children of Israel from Pharaoh's hand? He had an excuse. God, I can't speak well. Now, dude, what's funny, God knew, how to, that, that God knew that Moses couldn't speak well when he sent him. But Moses used it as a crutch or an excuse that I'm inadequate. Why are you going to send me to speak to a king? Because it was your destiny, Moses. From the moment I put you in the Nile and you floated to Pharaoh's sister and, and now you're raised in the palace. Pharaoh's daughter, excuse me. And now you flow in the palace. Why all of a sudden you feel inadequate when I raised you for this? What are you saying, Carrie? God has told me this morning to tell many of you that are watching, you are fearing something that would never happen. You have just what it takes to be successful, but you are comparing yourself to others, causing you to feel inadequate or not having what it takes. You know what I love about Steve Jobs? And Steve Jobs is one of my most favorite people I love to study. Steve Jobs didn't finish college. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, that was uh, when Mother got to uh, for Microsoft. He didn't finish college. And you have Steve Jobs here who, 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 who was making uh, uh, Apple from his garage with his other guy. They came up with an idea, a concept. And Steve Jobs knew that without me, good morning, Jackie, that this project won't work. What are you saying, Kerry? There are things that God gives you that only you can bring to pass. And without you in it, it will not happen. That's why you must stop comparing yourself to other people. Two major companies in this world, IBM and Apple, both of them are both computers but have different operating softwares, but they're both liked throughout the world and used throughout the world. Why is this important? What are you sitting on that God has put inside of you that you refuse to go forward within life because somebody told you that you were naked. Somebody told you that you were not good enough. Or maybe you told yourself that. So inadequate is lacking the quality or quantity required. Insufficient for a purpose. When we were all born, we already had everything inside of us 
that was necessary to do what God birthed us to do in life. I'll say it again. From the moment that you were born, you already housed inside of you everything that God wanted you to have to do the destiny that he created you to do. But here's the problem. Through society, through the knowledge, through the wisdom handed to us through our society, our culture, and our parents, and our peers, and our teachers, and life, we lost our stance in the garden. We lost our stance with God. We lost our connection to creativity. We lost our connection to imagination. We lost our connection to being authentic. Come on, y'all are quiet this morning. And what God is saying is, who told you that you were inadequate? Society did. You had this idea and you shared it with someone and they said to you, no, nah, I don't think that'll work. It's been tried already, but it wasn't tried by you because God destined you to do it. You had this concept that you shared with somebody who was jealous of you or you shared with somebody who, who, who was looking for the next best idea themselves and they stole your idea. And so now you feel inadequate because you don't feel smart enough because you don't have degrees on your wall. Again, if you study most of the most powerful men in the world, they did not graduate from college. Some didn't even go to college, but they created things by the wisdom of God that was given to them from birth. It was after coming into this world that we were given the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Watch this. From our parents and our culture. And it birthed inadequacies into our spirits that now unleash the spirit of fear. Are you enjoying this this morning? Does it make sense? How many of you can say, Carrie, I'm seeing what you're saying? Because why is it when I think about doing something, the first thing that rushes in is fear? Hmm. We compare our looks, our smarts, our abilities. That's just a few of the things we compare when we get an idea from God. When God births something in your spirit, when you get this unction to function, and all of a sudden you step out to do what God calls you to do, and fear rushes in. What if you fail? What if you look like a fool? What if you just fall flat on your face? We forgot that we were created in God's likeness and his image. Meaning the moment we were born, we had the ability to be. Now I'm going to say something to you and it's going to hurt a little bit. But we have a, we, we're so much saying, well, no, when I was born, I was born in sin and I was shaped in iniquities. No, I wasn't born in sin. My mom and daddy was married. I wasn't born in iniquities, but I was taught that. So for that reason, I began to get further and further away from who I am in God because as a child, I'm blank. I have no programming. I have nothing but the pureness that I was born of from God. And likewise from you, when you were born, you didn't know sin, as they call it. You didn't know the wrongs of life. When you were born, you were born innocent. And it's through the teachings and the trainings and the upbringings that pushes you further from God because the fruit that came from the tree of knowledge of good and evil actually took you from the state of who God is to a state of who God was. And so now we find ourselves trying to get back to God by doing certain acts. Whereas when we all, what we really have to do is get back to our authenticity and just simply be. We're spending our whole days wondering, did I hurt someone? Did I do wrong? Did I keep his commandments? Did I pray? Did I fast? Did I think, did I give gratitude? Did I, we, we, we got this list of priorities versus just wake up and be. I love it when Moses asks God, would you, you, okay, I accept that you want me to go down here and speak to Pharaoh. But when I get there, who do I say sent me? And he says, tell Pharaoh, I am that I am has sent you. Wait a minute. What's, you, what's unique? That's, that's, that's it, you know. What's unique about that? Whatever I need to be, that's what I will be when I get there. You got to understand that you have the power and the authority that when you walk up on a scene to change the atmosphere. But if somebody has told you that you're naked, you will never leave the confines of your home because you're afraid that somebody's going to judge you. Baby, if they're going to judge you because they want to be you, wake up and just simply be. When you get to where God has called you to be, simply say, who has told you that you have the authority to do this? God said it. I am that I am. Because God says, I birth you. I birth you to do this destiny. And you don't need man's permission to be. Oh, somebody ought to get happy right there. We forgot that we were created in his likeness and his image. 
We forgot that we are peculiar people, that we're not going to fit in. There's going to be something different about us, that we can't be categorized and we can't be put in a category where well, you remind me of this and you remind me of that. No, baby. When you're being authentic, you have your own category. They can't put you in one. But the moment you conform to this world is the moment you give your power, you handcuff your abilities to be, and you say, give me my slave name and give me my, my, my expectations. And you go through life bound by the customs and the ways that this world, and you never be who God created you to be. It's a shame that at this very moment, somebody in this world have died and they never fulfilled the purpose of their being in this world. Let me say something to you. Just because you are successful doesn't mean you're doing the destiny and the will that God called you to do. Because see, somebody told you you were naked, so you went and got all these degrees and we got all these things. And don't get me wrong. We live in a society where to have certain things, you need a degree. But you know what I learned? If they don't have a field for you to play on, baby, create your own field to play on. Come on, somebody. Create your own field. Why should I compose and uh, compromise myself and conform to your field when if God has given me the ability, let me create the next greatest thing this world has never seen. That's where we mess up at. We're too busy trying to copycat or conform when we have the power to create. When's the last time you tapped into who you really are? You know why you're not doing it? Because you're hiding. You're hiding because you hear God saying, there is more than I require of thee. And instead of you stepping out on the powers of God, you went and hid because you said, God, I'm inadequate. I don't have the ability. God has been trying to sit with you and dine with you and be intimate with you. But we don't want it because we don't feel we're worthy of his intimacy. <laughs> I am. We, God has wanted to visit us and he's wanted you to be the best you. And he wants you to be the greatest thing that he created you to be. But you're sitting back going, but God, I'm not ready. God, I'm inadequate. God, I did this. And God, I did that. God knew everything you were going to do before you did it. And he still birthed you for that purpose. Somebody better get happy right here. The reason why you are yet to fulfill your purpose is because the centers of your focus has been upon the systems of this world that has been created to keep you in bondage. I said it. The system of the world says you're not good enough. The system of the world says there's a penalty you must pay for your errors. The system of the world says that God can't use dirty. You got to be clean and you got to be purged and you got to be everything that God called you to be. The last time I checked, most of those jokers in the Bible were nasty, dirty, and did some things that, that we do today and then some. What are you saying, Carrie? You better stop looking at God and saying, I'm naked. You need to say, here I am, God. Use me for your glory. Somebody should get happy this morning. You woke up feeling like you were nothing. You felt like because you couldn't get Christmas gifts and you had nobody to share Christmas with that you're nothing. Baby, you can share yourself with the world and the world will be blessed to have you. Just because somebody lives in the house with you doesn't mean they're still sharing Christmas with you. They're just sharing space if they're not truly what God called them to be for you. Oh, my God. God wants to visit you, but you're making so many excuses and those excuses are coming from a fear base. Now, I need you to share this message this morning. And I need you to tell somebody that you know is making excuses. Baby, you need to hear Apostle Kerry Pope right now because he's giving us some knowledge and some wisdom. And you're saying you're Nick and he's saying, no, you're not. When you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, fear immediately rushes in. When Adam saw the tree. Now I wasn't there, so let me use my spiritual imagination. Because the reality is none of, none of us was there through any of this part of the Bible. So anything we give to anyone is our imaginations that God allows us to use flowing through the spirit. Welcome, Brittany. But I could see this tree. And I could see Adam saying, what is it about that tree? Because what we fail to understand is he already had all the entire world inside of him. He had the ability to name every animal. He had the ability to, to do all these things. Adam had it going on because he was God in flesh. And then he ate from the tree of knowledge. That's why all knowledge is not good knowledge because some knowledge can confine you to a bondage. 
That's why you got to ask yourself, do I need to know everything or do I need to know what God wants me to know? Because you can learn some things that'll mess you up and you can learn some things that'll put you in mental bondage. And you need to understand that when God created you, he already created you perfect and unique. But it's once the world saw you and it says you need this and you need a little bit of that and you need this here and you need that there. Now it took you from your authenticity and it created a robot that puts you in the same system that govern you to govern yourself. So that's why you find yourself not feeling worthy because you're keeping track of all the things you've done wrong. Let me blow your mind with something and you need to hear this. If God doesn't remember my sin as we're taught, then why am I remembering it? Pause for the cause. If my sins, according to the word of God, is thrown to the sea of forgetfulness and I've been forgiven, then why is it that I'm sitting here on the sideline remembering all the failures that I've done? I've got a pen and a pad of all the things I didn't accomplish. I got a pen and a pad and a, and a sob story for what happened to me 10, 15, 20 years ago. But then you ask God what happened. He goes, I don't know. I, I didn't even think to remember it because it was no big deal to me because I knew he was going to do those things, but I still anointed him because that was a purpose and a destiny for his or her life. So why should I remember their failure when I already knew their failure was going to propel them to where I need them to go. Understand something, ladies and gentlemen, while you're playing checker, God is playing chess and God has already ordained your moves, even your failures to cause you to move four steps forward. That's why you got to stop tripping when you don't feel, ina when you feel inadequate, you don't feel like you have what it takes. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You're getting happy because you're over here keeping record. Well, I, I had this many divorces. I've had this much. I've had sex with these many people. I've blown this much money. I, I, I'm just not worthy. Listen to me very carefully. I'm worthy of everything that God created me to be. And I refuse to die not fulfilling my destiny because I felt naked. I'm talking to somebody this morning. There's... Three things that God has already told two of you to do right now. And I'm, I'm hearing him so clearly. He says, but you're sitting back going, well, I don't have the funds. He didn't ask you to get the funds. He just told you to get the idea and the concept. Well, I don't have a purpose partner. You, didn't leave a, you don't need a purpose partner when God gave you the idea. Maybe if you go forward, the purpose partner will come as you're walking on the journey of what God called you to do. Stop tripping. Stop feeling inadequate and get off your, your seat of do nothing and be. I'm talking to somebody this morning. You got to stop saying I'm naked. I need somebody to cover me. Baby, you don't need nothing to cover you but God and his wisdom and his wisdom and his wisdom and his wisdom and his wisdom. You have bought into a system that has subdued you and put you in concrete that's causing you not to be able to move forward because you have self-judged yourself because the system has taught you to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And you checked yourself and you stopped yourself because now you don't feel that you have what it takes to be successful. There's only one T.D. Jakes. There's only one Martha Stewart. There's only one Tyler Perry. There's only one. Why should I try to be them, baby? Be who God called you to be. LeBron James grew up on welfare, living on somebody's couch, not having a home. Now he's creating schools for less fortunate people. He didn't use his excuse. He took the talent and his purpose, and now he's making a way. Why aren't you making a way? Because you're too busy sitting back, keeping a checklist of what you've done wrong. I'm not doing that. If you want to hold my pads over my head, baby, you go right ahead. But as far as I'm concerned, if God doesn't remember it, then I can give a ham sandwich if you remember. I'm concerned about where I'm going in life. I need somebody to get happy with me this morning. You're too busy remembering the abortion. God doesn't remember it. You're too busy remembering the failure. God doesn't remember it. And if God doesn't remember it, why are you sitting here in depression and condemnation? Why are you sitting here making excuses when God is going, but I don't even remember it. So if I don't remember it and I'm the one who's going to create your life, who created you and I hold your destiny, then why are you over tripping? Because the systems that came from the tree of knowledge of good and evil has now conformed you to be what they call you to be. And they put a check by your name as what? They're followed they're, they're following orders. They're in line. Today, I need you to get out of line. Today, I need you to say, wait a minute, Carrie. I'm not naked. Let me get, what, let me, let me, Lord, well, let me say, I'm not inadequate. Let me get up and be what God called me to be and stop tripping about my past. 
Because if it had not been for my past, my future won't be as bright as it is. Come on, somebody. It's my dark past that has, that has lightened my future. I need somebody to hear me. Stop going fishing in your pond of past. If God puts your sins in the sea of forgiveness, why did you go get fishing license to sit there and fish at your past? Leave your past where it's at. Look at the signs that said no trespassing and don't go into the sea of forgiveness to get the things that God has forgotten about. Oh my. So before the fall of man, creativity flowed freely and efficiently. But due to now being naked, fear has stopped us dead in our tracks. You remember when God gave you a dream and gave you a vision of what you were going to do and you started doing it and you ran into some roadblocks and then all of a sudden fear ran in? Well, those roadblocks are sat there to make you go even deeper into the power of creativity and create Instead, we sit back and go, <laughs> oh, I need somebody to help me get around this wall. No, you don't, baby. All you need to do is to look at that wall and say, get behind me. Or God, give me the ability to go through it. Because here's what you understand now. Nothing in your life can be successful without, any, without difficulties along the way. You never get something for free. There's always going to be difficulty in obtaining the things of God because he, first of all, doesn't want you to get caught up in your ego. Second, he wants you to be a have a spirit of gratitude for what you're going through. And thirdly, you'll know without God, I can do nothing. So you won't get caught up in, again, your ego. God allows walls to come and barriers to come to cause us to go deeper inside, to rely on him and not our own abilities. Some attributes of fear are this, worrying, anxiety, doubt, physical illness, behavioral changes. Some of us right now are feeling physical illness due to us worrying or the spirit of fear operating our lives. There's two systems that should either operate your life that no, we're not sure, but do. There's one system that should, but there's two systems that operate. One, love. Second, fear. God loved Adam. He met him every day, spoke to him because Adam had not yet eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he could care less what was going on outside the world because he was with God. But the moment he ate of that fruit, he lost his connection with God, became more in tune with the world and the connection distant and fear came in. So God was asking a question. So here, let's get to this here. So the true question that God was asking, what was the true question that God was asking? Now, before I go any further, is this message blessing anyone? Is anyone hearing this right now and you're saying, man, Carrie, feed me this morning because you you got me over here shaking. You got me here going, yes, yes, I can do this. Who can truly say this message so far has put a fire in your spirit to go and do what God created you to do? Now, maybe, I know it is for me. But can you tell me right now, Carrie, keep it going because what you're saying is enlightening my life. My God, this is good stuff. So the true question that God was really asking, who told you that you were naked meant much more than who told you that you don't have any clothes on? See, we think that God is asking base questions and simple questions. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Monica. I'm going to keep, Monique, I'm going to keep going. So when God says, who told you that you were naked? He was just not asking an open question. But he wanted to know, who told you that there's anything for you to be compared to that makes you feel inadequate? So in doing so, it now brought about self-condemnation. Wait a minute. Mm. So from God's perspective, nakedness meant much more than just you not having clothes on. So God is asking this question this morning to those that are watching the broadcast. Who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were inadequate? Or better yet, who told you that you're not good enough? So it now meant self-imposed condemnation and deprivation. Deprivation from the natural abilities that God has given you. When you feel you're not good enough, it brings about self-condemnation and it brings about um, deprivation and it pushes you away from it. It deprives you from the ability to be. Y'all hear that? It brings about self-condemnation and it deprives you of the ability to be. 
So if Romans 1, if, if Romans 8 and 1a says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, then the condemnation that we are feeling is a direct, a direct result from fear. So here's the system. The system says good and evil. If you do this, you're going to be punished. And you do it and fear rushes in and you're now afraid to come out for the punishment that God is going to give you. When God is over here saying, I didn't say that. My will for you is not to know the difference between good and evil, because if you don't know the difference, then you'll never know that you're right or wrong. You'll just simply be. So now that you've eaten of the fruit of the world that says this is good, this is bad. Now you're self condemnation You're going through self-condemnation or you're self-condemning yourself. And thus you don't feel worthy enough. So you deprive yourself and the ability to simply be who I called you to be. It is a trick of the enemy that comes from the word fear. Are you hearing this this morning? My God, when you deprive yourself of your natural ability, you have now conformed to the world and you're now sitting in time out or you're now idle. So Roman tells us there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Now, if, 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 if they want to spin it, if they say that Christ is really God in flesh, then there's no condemnation in God. So Adam should have never felt condemned for being naked, but because he ate of a tree that had knowledge of good and evil, the evil said you did wrong. Now punishment comes. So now you feel condemned. But wait a minute, wait a minute, boys and girls. If I never eat of the fruit, then that means I never feel wrong or right. I just simply feel me. I didn't know it was wrong to say such and such. I didn't know it was wrong to do such and such. What are you saying, Carrie? That wasn't a right or wrong with God. It's when you ate of society's ways and society's ways of being, oh, that's a sin. Baby, a baby could care less what sin is when he's born because all a baby does is cry and say, feed me. But we start giving him the tree. We start picking fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And now we raise our kids to live in fear of hell and fear of punishment. And that God is going to get you because you told a lie. And God is going to get you because you stole it. God is going to get you. So you start self-condemning yourself. I don't feel worthy. Oh, my God. Some of us are grown kids still feeling self-condemnation. When God is simply saying, that's not my will for you. If there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus or God, then this condemnation that we are feeling is not of God, but from the society of fear. Somebody better hear me this morning. God wanted to know if Adam had eaten from the tree of knowledge, better known today as society. Yuna, did you eat from the tree of society that told you that you're naked, that told you you're not good enough? Diane, did you eat from the tree of society that told you because of your skin color, you can't accomplish what others can accomplish? Oh, come on, somebody. Rebecca, did you eat from the tree of society that told you that you're doing what a man called you to do? Brenda, did you eat from the tree of society that told you that you can only be married once? And if you're married more than once, that you're really now out of the will of God. Let's stop the madness. We all have eaten from the tree of society, but the problem is society has now embedded you with what? Fear. And God is saying, I did not call you to this. I call you to freedom, life, and abundance. And that's why we say blessings and abundance to you. Because when you understand what God is and who God is when he created you to walk in, you will get out of the system. Society is the aggregate of people living together in a more or less ordered community. So when we say society, that means don't buck the system. Because if you buck the system, that means we got to judge you. And what they used to do, if you study history, the Catholic Church used to burn people at the stake. They said anything contrary to what they taught. What I'm speaking to you today, in some people's ears, can be considered heresy. And we're taught, oh my God, cover your ears. That man is going to send you to hell when I'm actually trying to get you out of hell. Y'all better help me, somebody. I'm trying to get you out of hell. But they'll say, if you listen to him, he's speaking the heresies. And that goes against what the teachings of the world and the church has been and throughout life. Well, baby, maybe you need a different change. Because if you really listen to the word of God, if there's no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus, then why do I feel condemned? I'll wait. I'll wait. Because this is the way life center that is here to teach you the way to get to God. Minus all of the rules and regulations and all the things that make you feel less fortunate and dirty. 
Because let me say something to you, baby. The day you were born, you were born in the likeness and image of God. There was nothing wrong with you. But then you ate of that tree, of that, that, that fruit of knowledge of good and evil that says you're not good enough. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're too dark. Your hair's not long enough. You don't know how to talk. Oh, look at you. You have ebonics. Look at you. You're not this. You're not that. Your face is not proportioned right. Oh, my God. You flat chest. You're big chest. You're big butt. You're little butt. You're too tall. You're too skinny. Come on, somebody. This is society. And then God is saying, but I created you to be perfect and you are now imperfect due to a world or a system that has judged you now causing you to judge yourself so another one bites the dust many people who live under a system of beliefs for their governing this system although it seems to be filled with great freedoms is really laced and underlined in fear rather than in love my God, when you feel like you're not good enough, those who are afraid of not being accepted, not fitting to the world, not adequate enough to succeed, let's be honest, that's most of us who have bought into a system that tells you that you got to do all these things. It's funny when you go to, a, and I'm not, I'm not knocking on anyone when I say this, but think about this. You go to a priest, and someone told me that they got to go to confession. They have been confessions in a year. And they, they're being made to go to confessions and they got to sit in the booth and tell this priest all their wrongs. And the priest is going to exonerate them and tell them to do 20 Hail Marys and 18 Our, Our Fathers. And then you're okay. Pause for the cause. 20 Hail Marys and 18 Our Fathers. And that frees you of all the stuff that you've done. Or better yet, you got to stop and sit down and I'm silencing you from being anything and nobody can affiliate with you because you didn't do what we call you to do or told you to do. So for that reason, you've been ostracized. Many of us experience being ostracized from the world when you don't conform. So when God was asking Adam, God, God said, did you conform to the society around you? Did you conform to being naked? Because the society around you is naked. They're not clothed in my love. They're clothed in fear. So now, Adam, you've hidden yourself from me and covered yourself with fig leaves because you got some parts that you think I don't know about. Man, I gave you those parts. So you're covering them because now somebody's told you you're naked. Many of you, many of you are covering the natural born gift that God has given you because you're trying to compare yourself to Halle Berry. You're trying to compare yourself to Beyonce. You're trying to compare yourself. You, you know, one of the greatest singers that ever has lived is Anita Baker. And the people told Anita Baker, you're no good. Your voice is too deep. Or they told Tony Braxton, nobody's going to sign you. Your voice is too deep. Hey, James Brown and all these various artists who had the courage to simply be and walk in their authenticity and do what God called them to do. They didn't listen to to the system and now everybody's praising them because oh my god the greatest entertainer to ever live prince comes out in para hills and playing music nobody's ever heard of but now is known as one of the greatest musicians to ever live dare to be different baby dare to be authentic buck the system and be Come, somebody better hear me this morning. Buck the system and be. Stop feeling you got to conform to the world and just wake up and say, no, nah, I'm going to do it my way today. I'm going to wear my hair loose. I'm not doing the weave. I think Rebecca's wearing her hat natural now. And some go, oh, my God, she looks crazy. Oh, my baby, fine and sexy with it. And I can rub my fingers through her hair because she's been authentic. And what's sad about it is when people judge, they're judging because they don't have what it takes because they're too afraid to be you. So if I can't be you, I'll judge you. If I can't be you, I'll talk about you. If I can't be you, then I'll come against you and maybe you'll conform back to who we are so we'll all feel the same. No, baby, if you don't want to come up, I will not come down. So for that reason, I'll either meet you at the top or I'll see you later. It's that way. It's got to be that way. That way only. My God. Woo, I love this. We forgot that although we are in this world, we're not of this world. We forgot that although we live in this world, we're really not of this world. But the moment you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you lose your place with God and you become part of this world. You become part of the system. My God. What does it mean that we're in the world but not of the world? It means we don't operate with the same operation system that the world operates with. We're on a different level, baby. 
That's why you can't mix IBM and Apple together. They're two operating systems. See, we're too busy trying to conform to the world just to fit in, but we want to do a little bit of God too. So we're trying to blend some of God and some of the world, some of God and some of the world, some of God. And God's going back, no, look, no, no, boo, that's not me. See, you think, oh, hallelujah, I heard God so clear. He says, tell them some of the people that you thought were actually operating in me is not operating in me. They're operating in themselves, calling it me because I don't mix with the world. I am that I am, and I don't need to mix with nothing to be. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I, oh my God, I hear you. God said, I don't need to mix with nothing to be. I'm authentic. I said, let there be, and that was. So why do I need to mix with the world to be? When I can simply be in the world, have to get in order with me. Because God said, let there be, and there was. Some of us today need to hear this. You're too busy asking for permission to be. God never asked light to be. God command light to be. God never asked the waters to be. God commanded the waters to be. Stop asking and start commanding because that's part of your power that was given to you by God is that you don't have to ask for anything. You can do it and it shall be. Somebody better hear me this morning. Can I be honest with you? And I love this part that God gave me to operate as the world does means that you have forfeited your birthright and you're now settling for the porridge of the world. I'll say it here. When you operate in the world system, that means you have voluntarily given up your birthright and you're settling for the porridge. Remember the story of Esau and Jacob? And Esau was the one who had the birthright to receive as his father passed it down. But here's Esau who, who, who was a hunter and he fixed some porridge and, um, and, and, and he was one that was making all this and, 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 and excuse me, and at this time Jacob, excuse me, made the porridge and made the meal and Esau came in from hunting. Somebody wrote it down, soup, that's it. You let go of your birthright to have the whole entire world for a bowl of soup. Jacob caught him at the right time. And Esau said, I'll give my birthright for a bowl of soup. Stop for a cause. Let's, 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 let's pause for the cause. I refuse to be a watered down version of God, or better yet, a bowl of soup. I have the power to create anything that God wants created by saying, let it be, and the world will have to become obedient. Mm. But we're settling for the porridge. Just give me a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and I'm okay with a little bit of this, and I don't want to be, I don't want all of that. It, it costs too much, and I'm hungry, so just give that to me right now. Baby, I'm not so hungry that I'll sell my birthright for a bowl of porridge. I'm not so gullible and desperate that I'll continue to buy for a system that gives me a little bit of fame when God says fame is not even what you should be worried about. You have the ability to change the world, countries. You have the ability to bring knowledge and wisdom to a world. But you'd rather settle for the porridge and a little stage and a little platform. Jackie, you have the ability to cook anything you want to. And I don't want you to settle for the, just a little bit of the stage. Baby, let God give you some wisdom and knowledge to pull our recipes out that the world have never tasted, that when they taste and see that your recipes are good, they'll call for it throughout the entire world. China, Russia, Japan, Australia, Canada, the South Americas. Come on, somebody. When you learn to be, they'll come looking for you because they're going to want what you have because they've been searching the world for it. But you chose to not conform anymore. So don't be like Esau, so hungry that you forfeit your birthright that could feed billions for a bowl of soup that feeds you. Who told you that you were naked? Who convinced you that you're not good enough? I'm, I'm, I'm going to close this thing, but here's how you get back to what God called you to be. Here's how you get out of the system. You go through what's considered transformation. You undergo transformation. Now, to get back to the initial state of being who God created you to be, it isn't just found in repenting. It isn't just found in keeping the commandments because, you know, you say, well, I repented and I kept the commandments and you, you got this routine every day. Father God, thank you for raising me up this morning. I give you glory. Forgive me of any sin, my trespasses. Forgive me, God, for all I've done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You go out your day and it becomes a routine. No, 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 no. 
Getting back to your authenticity only comes through mental transformation. Somebody better hear me this morning. Getting back to who you are and God created you to be can only come through mental transformations, not 20 Our Fathers and 10 Hail Marys, not through rose beads and not through your, your working through the system and becoming a slave to God. No, baby, God didn't ever command you to be a slave when he called you to the freedoms and the powers of his might. So to find the true answer to getting back to our renewal is found in Romans 12 and 2 that told us, clear as day, do not be conformed to this world. Do not eat of the fruit of good and evil, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Wait a minute. So you're telling me that let's go back to the garden, that really what happened when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit from the tree of good and evil, their mind changed. They lost the mind of God and they took on the mind of society. Yes. That's what happened, baby. And so now fast forward to Rome and Paul tells them, do not conform to this world. Stop being like everything around you and be ye transformed. Change by being renewed in your mental thinking. Watch this there. After you've been renewed, that by testing you, you may discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect. I love it. In other words, you can never judge the will of God until you, conf until you transform by being renewed through your mind and lose the ways of society. The two key action words that must happen in order to get back to true identity is transformation and renewal. Transformation and renewal. So what is transformation? It means a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. In other words, it's a total makeover. But instead of this, the makeover is not outside. The makeover is inside. As a man think it, so is he. So if you never renew your mind, you'll never renew your outside. You can put on a new dress, baby, and still be old and hard and nasty inside and never be you know, the power that God called you to be. So you must change the inside and how you think. And then secondly, renewal. Renewal means an instant or resuming an activity or state after an interruption. So what's key about this is awesome. The interruption came when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit that came from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There was a pause. Interruption came. Fear rushed in. System rushed in, society now defined, and next thing we know, there's a system in place to govern that brings about self-condemnation and deprivation, depriving you from being who God called you to be. Hey, mom, welcome. And for that reason, now God is saying, I need you to renew or resume the activities of being as I was creating you to be from birth. Because now we're going to get rid of the interruptions that have deprived you from stepping and walking in your power. Anybody get that right there? You get that? Renewal means an instant of resuming an activity. In other words, we are trying to get back to the garden. The garden is here. God said, once you change how you think and be renewed in your spirit, now I can take the pause button and put it back to play. And you can now walk back into the power that God gave us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. You won't get there until you get past the interruptions. <laughs> in this case, the interruptions of our connection to God began from birth through various teachings. Therefore, we must now be retaught with the correct way of seeing life through the lenses of love and not fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Hear that? So if God did not give you the spirit of fear, then you have to stop seeing life through the lenses of fear and see it through the lenses of love. And you won't be so judgmental. You won't be feeling lax and you will not be feeling naked. You'll say, wait a minute. I'm just, I was already good. Why did I go through this system that made me become something I'm not? Watch this here and I'm done. One of my most favorite movies of all is The Matrix. And in the matrix, when Neo had a choice to take the red pill or the blue pill, he chose the red pill. And the red pill, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, it's one or the other. The red pill took him further into learning 
or being reprogrammed. And he went through a transformation. And in the movie, he went through being rebirthed. They showed it. He went through a system of being reborn. But watch this. It took him dying in the end to finally get him through the rebirth. What are you saying, Carrie? It's going to take you dying a hard failure. It's going to take something drastic happen to you to say, wait a minute. I'm dead to that now. And it was once he died, he began to live. And you remember Neo stood up and Mr. Smith said, this can't be. There's enemies and there's people watching you that saying, they're not getting up from that divorce. They're not getting up from that layoff. They're not getting up from that, that catastrophe that happened to their life, that catastrophic event. They're not getting up. But it's when you have died to the ways of the world, you've died to systematic thinking, you've died to eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that you stand up and say, wait a minute, that doesn't apply to me. Whoa, 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 whoa. you got to hear this here. People are sending bullets at you, your past. They're sending to you the things you should be doing. If you are truly saved, you wouldn't do those things and those things. They're sending bullets at you. And you got to do like Neo. I've died to your opinion. I've died to you judging me. I've died to try to fit in. So when all these bullets come at you at one time, you can put your hand up and say, stop. Hammer time. And you can make all of them drop to the ground. Why? Because this no longer applies to you. And the Mr. Smiths of the world, the systems of the world, will now try to come and tackle you. And you will fight them with little effort. Why? Because you're no longer bound to the system that takes away your power. You're now operating in the freedom that has given you the power that God gave you from the moment you took your first breath. When anybody tells you otherwise, tell me to come talk to me because I'm trying to get you to understand something. The system is rigged to keep you out of power. After your mind has been renewed with the correct way of seeing life, then through testing, you may discern what is the will of God. Get it now. Here's what I love about it. Go back to the matrix. When Neo died and his body was renewed and now he is the one operating in his power. Now the true test came. Shoot every bullet you have at him. And so Mr. Smith, along with the other Mr. Smith, shot their bullets and shot their guns and all these things, accusations and past and fear and doubt and anxiety and self-lack and, and lack of worth. All these things came flying at Neo. Now you're Neo right now. But nothing, watch this ladies and gentlemen, no weapon formed against you shall prosper when you have been reborn and you're out of the system. Because now you have the ability to take command of your area and make every single one fall to the ground. You won't be held in your past because there will no longer be any self-condemnation. You won't go through a deprivation because you won't be deprived. Because God allowed these things to come to test you. Listen, that you may discern what is the will of God. So it's in the midst of being changed that you'll go, wait a minute, that ain't even what God's will for my life. That's your will for me because you want to keep me in the system. That's not what God wants me to do. He didn't birth me to be that. He, that's what you want me to do because that was your dream that you didn't accomplish. You got to hear this morning. You will be able to discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect. In other words, what's not perfect for you is perfect for me because I'm doing what God called me to do. So because it don't fit you, baby, it fits me well. So I'm not going to sit here and feel like I'm not uh, 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 what God called me to be because I'm comparing myself to you. There is no comparison when I'm walking in perfection of God, when I'm walking in my authenticity. I'm being me. And it was from that moment that Neo died that he began to live. What are you saying, Carrie? I need you to die to the systems of society. I need you to die to feeling that you're inadequate. I need you to die to feeling that you're naked and say, wait a minute, I am uniquely designed by God and everything he created me to be when I was born is still waiting on me, but I got to die to the systematic thinking and get back to what God called me to be. That's why when I do something, things happen. Because I'm walking in my authenticity and I'm not doing it because I think I'm all that or I'm highly anointed. I'm just doing what I'm called to do. So call it highly anointed, call it what you want to call it. I'm just being carried. And you can't beat me being carried, but you can beat me being Rebecca. You can beat me being Una. You can beat me being anyone else. But if you get me in my own authenticity, you can't touch this, baby. You can't be me. 
We got to learn how to just be okay in being ourselves. If you're overweight, God rock your overweightness. It's okay. That's you. If you're skinny as it could be, it's okay. Be you. Stop comparing yourself and walk in your authenticity and say, God, you created me to be who I am. And there's nobody that could compare to me because you made only one me. That's why your DNA is designed for just you. There is nobody else that has your DNA, has your fingerprints. They're simply yours. You're unique. I close with these words. When you walk in your authenticity, this means through various tests and trials, you will know what is good for your life. You'll know what is perfect for your walk. And you'll know what is acceptable for your destiny. And you won't allow anybody to take that from you. Because you're no longer governed by the system. But you're now walking and clothed in your destiny. Oh, I give God a praise right there. I'll give God a praise right there. I'm done. But I know God has spoken so profoundly this morning. I'm telling you, this message got me over shaking in my skin because I am so excited about 2020. I'm so excited about getting back to my authenticity. I'm so excited about being what God called me to be. When you are who God called you to be, then nobody can stop you. But the moment you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you get caught up in society is the moment you lose your power and you conform to the ways of the world. My God, so I pray that this message today has blessed you mightily as it has blessed me and given it. So much revelation God has given. So much knowledge God has poured through the airwaves this morning. If you didn't hear God and feel God, then something's wrong. And for those who have refused to get out of the system, they're gonna say, oh, a hitman's gonna lead you to hell. I tell you what, you won't see me in hell because you're already living in it. I am going to walk in my authenticity. I am going to be what God called me to be. We created the way life center to help those that are wanting to find the way to find the way. There's a road with many travelers, but then there's a gate that is small and narrow and very few people find it. We're on that gate. We're on that path. We're on that way. The way life center is here to empower you to be you nobody else. I don't want you to be Carrie. I don't want you to be Rebecca. I want you to be you. And that's our job here is to empower you to be you and give you the keys of your own authenticity to say, it's okay, baby, to be you. I love this message. So let's pray. Father God, I glorify you. I thank you for such a profound word this morning. I glorify you, God, for speaking to us clear, so clear that even a child can understand. Father, renew our minds. Let us go through mental transformation this morning that we can now see through the eyes of you. And if we start to see that this world that we live in is not real, then we'll start to see the real true makeup of this world. And you'll help us to see, God, what our true destiny looks like from the lens of love, the lenses of love and not from fear. We won't walk in fear. We'll walk in love, power, and a sound mind. So, Father, a sound mind tells us that our minds outside of that is not sound, but is wavering, that our mind is not walking in power, but walking in failure, walking in an inferior complex. That's not what we are to the God. We're not inferior to anything. So let us now be transformed in our minds. Hit the pause button that has interrupted our steps with you and let us get back to living in authenticity. Who told us that we were naked? Society did. But you told us this morning, God, that if we lose society and simply be, we will walk in the power of our might. We'll walk in our destiny and we will have accomplished our purpose for life. And so I glorify you this morning, God, those that have watched it live, those that are watching it in replay, those that will play it over and over and over and over again. Let this word saturate us in such a way that it provokes our thinking and it pricks us to change. This we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. The way life center is great soil. I'm telling you, it's the kind of soil that it's thought provoking. It puts a seed in your mind and it grows you. 
I want to be in a place and so in a place where I can see the returns on my investment. This is the place. This is the place where you can see the returns on the investments that God has given the Way Life Center. And so partner with us this morning, sow seeds this morning, write us. Write us and, and say, hey, I want, I want to tell you what, what, your, what your messages are doing, what Rebecca messages are doing for me, how the Wave Life Center is changing my life. I've been looking for this place, and I can't wait to fellowship with you in person. Yeah.